you know, not available. All of that usual stuff. We had a panic button here. This was, if you cannot understand the bloody word they're saying, just get the information you can, invent a problem and call them back. You know, get the information down and then go, um, oh, I'm sorry, we're, we seem to, we're having a fire alarm, uh, a drill. Uh, and, oh, the plane has just descended over the building. And I, I actually, some of my students actually recorded tapes with sound effects on. <laughs> you know, we, we had a teach yourself Japanese tape. Oh, it seems to be a bit of a crossed line. I'll, I'll call you back. Uh, actually, there's a website, do you know it, called sorrygottago.com. Go to it, it's great. It's called sorrygottago.com and it's just sound effects you can put the phone next to to get people off the phone. <laughs> there is an alarm and the boss comes into office. Oi, I want a word with you. You, just put a, and you sort of just put it like that and he goes, Oi, oh, 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 sorry, the boss has just come in, I have to go. It's brilliant. Sorrygottago.com. Just look that one up. <clears throat> Not now though, on your iPhones. All right, okay. Um, so, all of this stuff. Um, the target language emerges from the activity and then we feed in very lean just what they need not more try it several times just providing them with the scaffolding the bare scaffolding really for the talk that they're going to give now one last student I've got just quickly do you teach advanced levels yeah because I find this is a problem at advanced levels, because they think they need advanced English. It's like they've done everything. And now they want idioms. I've got a Spanish guy at the moment who, sound, who looks and sounds like Antonio Banderas. That, that's the good part, I suppose. For some of you. I mean, not for me personally, but yeah. And he's like, eh, I can't do Antonio Banderas. I wish I could. I need more testosterone injections for that. But you know, he's like, eh, really, uh, Mark, I... Uh, I need American teacher, not Jew. Uh, <laughs> Jew are British and uh, he's okay, but uh, better American teacher. So if there are any Americans in the audience here, I can pass him on to you uh, if you're interested. Because <laughs> he likes to learn all this slangy stuff. You know, uh, particularly military things like, he said, what was it the other day? He said, um, I went to a meeting and they, they, shut, they shut my idea down in phlegm. <laughs> Sounds messy. Uh, shall we do down in fl flames? I think is what you mean there. But but look look, Joaquin, don't use it because it's not helpful. Yes, uh, American American business people use this all the time. <clears throat> right. So he started learning bizarre ones. Um, it was the other day. He said to me, Ah, uh, Mark, uh, do you know this expression? Uh, it, I, I am kicking wells up the beach. <laughs> Admitting we are kicking wells up the beach. I was like, I don't think I don't like the sound of that one. What's it? What do you mean kicking wells up the beach? I mean, what he meant was kicking way. Have you heard this expression? Kicking whales up the beach. <laughs> that is not a real whale. Just in case you animal rights people like me very upset about that. That's a plastic whale from the movie uh, Hancock or something. There you go. Look, Will Smith. Uh, <clears throat> wouldn't exploit a dead animal <clears throat> for the purposes of EFL. Not worth it. Uh, <clears throat> never do that. Never do. Oh, never use our skills for, for evil. Only for good. <laughs> you know, as business English coaches, professionals, <clears throat> with great power comes great responsibility. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so I was like, kicking whales up the beach means it's like a really difficult, arduous job. He said, you don't know this? I went, no, oh, I want an American teacher. I said, look, th th it's not helpful when you do business. Uh, and another one he had was, uh, sh uh, you probably know this one, because um, it's got quite well known now. Shoot, he said, uh, this morning, I shoot the poppy. <laughs> I shoot the poppy. And I thought he was talking about drugs. You know, <laughs> What? You know. <laughs> what are you on about? He meant, he meant, oh, sorry, wrong way. What's going on? Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> you bastard. You always do this to me. Just a moment. <laughs> what's happening? How strange. Uh, let's go to that one. That's the one I really want. 
Okay. Well, it spoilt my joke, but um, <clears throat> it's not a real dog. <laughs> and it's not a real gun either. Okay. Yeah. We need a health warning with this, don't we? Uh, yeah, shoot the puppy was the expression. Of course, you just pronounced it puppy. Um, shoot the puppy means, you know, get rid of a really... Uh, you have a, an idea that you've nurtured and you love it. And, oh, it's brilliant. And then you have to get rid of it. It's a bit like writing a book for an ELT publisher. They always want to get rid of your favourite bit of the book. You always have to sacrifice it to the god of ELT and you never see it again. So, are we going to work for me? Thank you. Idiomaticity doesn't help. It doesn't pay to speak more sophisticated English than the people you're doing business with. Now, if you're doing business with Americans who like saying shoot the puppy and kicking whales up the beach, there might be three or four of them, fine. But generally, you don't want it. You actually want lowest, what I call lowest common denominator English. That is to say, something that's not going to confuse anybody. And just a word here about what that might be. Um, <clears throat> talking about shooting dogs, <clears throat> lexical firepower. Because we're all post-lexical here, aren't we? You know, lexical approach. Oh, are we? Oh, we're not, apparently. Okay. Well, if you're familiar with the lexical approach, Michael Lewis and all of that kind of collocations, fixed expressions, semi-fixed expressions, there's a danger with the lexical approach, which I like just to talk to you about. Because I, I was involved in the lexical approach quite early on. You know, shortly after Michael did all those wonderful books, I worked for LTP and I worked for Michael Lewis. And all my books are highly lexical. But I've discovered something about the lexical approach, which is that we've paid far too much attention to collocations and fixed expressions, and not really enough to semi-fixed expressions and scripts and templates and more generative lexis. Give you an example. Some of my students the other day uh, they found this collocation in a text, a sizable market. And they said, what, what, what means sizable market? I don't bother correcting that anymore. Uh, <laughs> it's not worth it. No, it's just not worth it. I mean, sort of. I can't, I can't be fussed. Uh, what means sizable market? I said, well, it means, um, it means quite big. Um, it means quite, well, it means quite big. And they went, oh, sizable, but sizable, yeah, we like this, sizable market. So then they went away, old I could hear them in the coffee break, sizable market, yes, sizable market. And then they used it in a role play with another group, and they didn't know what they were talking about. They were sizable, what do you mean sizable? You mean it changes size? <laughs> you mean seasonal, flexible, seasonal market? No, 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 sizable. What they should have said is, quite a big market. But, of, which they, of course, would have said, a quite big market. <laughs> But do you see that that is more internationally useful than sizable market? And it just strikes me that quite a lot of the collocations that we teach in course books, be careful, because some of them actually have a simpler, downgraded alternative using much more delexicalized words like big, which are better. Also fixed expressions. Fic are you getting hot? You're looking a bit hot, some of you. You're blowing at me. You're sort of going... <laughs> is that because is that you're hot or bored? Lie, lie about that. Hot, yes. Fine, good. Uh, it's also true of... It's also true... No, I'm just going to get a bit of serious... Can we have a bit of seriosity for a minute? Because otherwise people criticise me sometimes for not having any seriousness in my talks. Fixed expressions as well. Be careful. Because they're not all as exotic and stupid as shooting the puppy. Some of them seem simple, but don't actually work. For example, some of my students learned for agreement. This was in an A2 level book, by the way. A2. You can say that again. So they did. <laughs> you can say that again. Okay, I'll say it again. Uh, because they heard, can you say that again? Now, look how simple. You can say that again. All the words are simple, but the meaning is not. That is a bad fixed expression to teach. Uh, what was another one that we had, apart from you can say that again? I'm trying to remember. Uh, one of them was, I couldn't agree more. 
And they went, why not? <laughs> went, what do you mean, why not? I went, you couldn't agree more? Well, you, you, could, you said you couldn't agree. No, I said I could agree. You said you couldn't agree more. More than what? More than this. Well, why don't you just say you agree? Oh, yeah. So, so be very careful. Some of these very transparent fixed expressions, in fact, don't always work. Um, and that's because we're a bit obsessed in EFL with phrase banks. You see these in course books. I've been asked by three different publishers now. <coughs> I won't mention all their names, but you know which one of them must be. <laughs> Can we have phrase banks? Teachers like phrase banks, students like phrase banks. You know, put all these useful expressions into boxes somewhere in the book. Why? Because phrase banks are about as useful these days. Well, they're about as reliable anyway as any other kind of bank. <laughs> they put it in the bank and it disappears. Really? Um, you know, what was it Earl Stevick said? If you want to forget something, put it in a list. And he's right. And sometimes people put them in mind maps, yeah? Oh, but come on. Nobody's mind's that simple. <laughs> a mind map. Certain fixed expressions are worth teaching. But these are the ones that are totally fixed. They're sort of almost predictable cliches that always occur in particular situations. And then they're worth learning. And... Um, <clears throat> So, in the area of small talk, for example, which I was talking about a month ago in Frankfurt, uh, so if you were at that talk in Frankfurt, you might want to check your email for a couple of minutes. Because <laughs> small talk is a thing that some of my German students say they can't do. You know, they go, oh, we can't do small talk. It, it's too small. <laughs> uh, it's just not it's relevant. It's, it's too small to be interesting for us. And um, it's big talk or no talk? <laughs> uh, <laughs> But it's not true, actually. It isn't true because I've been, I've stayed in German hotels and you tell me, is this true or not in a German hotel? Everybody says good morning to you. As you're walking down the corridor, Morgen, 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 Guten Morgen, 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 Grüß Gott, you know, perhaps. A Bavarian there. Um, and they always say good morning. You'd never do that in Britain. You go to a, a British hotel, they never say good morning to you as you're walking down. Well, only in faulty towns, you know. Where you know morning, Major, morning, faulty, you know. But, but in no other kind of hotel do they do it. So the Germans can do small talk. It's just too small. <laughs> it's, it's what do you say after you say good morning. And um, with Max, he said to me, um, uh, I have to socialize because I'm a consultant, as you know. And so I have to socialize. I hate this. Um, but I do it. And I don't, I don't really know how. I mean, I do and I don't. I, I always seem to be a bit strange. I invite people to my house. They invite me to their house on the island. It's all very pleasant. I said, well, how do you start? You know, I mean, you just open the door and say, hi, come on in. He said, oh, is that what you say? <laughs> so you know that, Max. He said, no, no, I, I, I said the last time I said, hello, welcome to my home. <laughs> I said, well, Max, that's a bit gothic. Yeah. Hello, welcome to my home. It sounds rather frightening. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, sort of, please, please, come in. The master is waiting for you. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah. our, our car broke down in the storm. Um, and, uh, and we saw a light. And, uh, yes, please, come in. You know. Uh, and so I said, no, 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 no. And he said, well, is it wrong? I said, it's not wrong, but, uh, but there are fixed expressions that are worth learning for this. And there are. So we're just going to have a quick look at some of them. <clears throat> Do this very fast. Uh, how are we doing for time, by the way? Ooh, sure, sure are you getting tired? Are you all right? Because I am. <laughs> Can't you tell? I'm flagging. He's flagging. They're going, he's flagging. He's flagging. Poor man, he's getting on. I used to have to do this forever, but now I've got to retire. Um... Here we go. These are, these are fixed expressions which I think are worth teaching because they're frozen expressions. You kind of say them in, in all languages. So I'm just going to flash them up on the board for you here. Uh, on the board. Look, I'm a teacher already. <laughs> on the board. <laughs> on the screen. And I'd just like you to decide who said these, okay? Uh, is it the host or the guest? Going to somebody's house, a business contact. Host.